guys, how the hell are you? And welcome to another IFAC. This is Infrequently Asked Questions. Questions that are burning a hole in your guys' brain and you just have to get an answer. So, without further ado, without wasting any more time, let's just go right into question number un. Do you still have that Opeth Red Rocks poster? I was at that show. I do indeed still have that poster. This poster typically hangs in my wife's uh, office downstairs. But man, I I was at the show. I absolutely loved this show. Every single band on the bill, Opeth, Gojira, and especially Devin Townsend, just destroyed it that night. I was actually surprised because this was my first time seeing a concert at Red Rocks, and I was amazed at the sound quality and the acoustics in that place. Absolutely fantastic show by every single band. Everything just uh, carried really, really nicely in that venue. And for those of you guys that would like to touch a little bit of that magic, please pick up the Opeth Live at Red Rocks DVD because that was actually filmed at this exact show. I also still have a t-shirt somewhere that Opeth made specifically for this show too, but god damn, that was such a great time uh, seeing that show with uh, my wife and with her friend Helena. What's your favorite album ever? Without a shadow of a doubt, it is Feel This by Jeff Healy Band. I know that for a lot of people that actually dig Jeff Healy, that's not exactly their favorite album, but damn, I just loved the hooks. I loved the guitar playing. That was just a sick record start to finish. It was something that my mom won in a uh, at like an awards banquet or something. She won in a door prize and she won like three other albums uh, at the same time too but that one in particular was the one that stuck with me. That was the album that inspired me to start playing guitar because it ripped so hard. I love that record so much. So I know it's not probably as metal as you were expecting but that is my favorite album. Every single time I hear one of those songs come on shuffle I have to listen to it all the way through and occasionally I still find myself putting on that whole album and just cranking it from start to finish. I love that record. I've recently become almost fully blind and I love to play guitar still, which brings me to my question. Could you rely on your ears and muscle memory to play a song or do you need to look at what you're playing? So firstly, let me just say, dude, that that's really unfortunate and don't let it get you down. You know, roll with these punches and rise above this challenge, dude. Just stay motivated, stay with it. Um, I, I can't imagine what you're going through because I've never really had any sort of disability or anything like that affect me. So, you know, I won't pretend to be on the same level as you, but do just uh, stay with it, keep trucking along, and more power to you. Now, as far as your situation goes, though, you do have a precedent that's been set for you by the likes of the aforementioned Jeff Healy incredibly gifted blind guitar player. For those of you guys that don't know who he is, he was the blind guitar player that was playing in the movie Roadhouse. And that was not an act. He's actually blind. He was blind since the age of one, and he was a badass ripping guitar player. For proof on how badass and ripping he was, I'm going to include a link in the description for a video that he did with uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan where he guessed it on Look at Little Sister and he just destroys that fucking stage with his soloing on it. It's so ripping. It's so awesome. Uh, definitely check him out. Uh, that can serve as a little bit of inspiration. Another source of inspiration too, not necessarily someone who's blind, but someone who, uh, from what I read in an article, in like Guitar World or a Guitar Player or something like that. Guitar Player Johnny A, a really awesome killer uh, sideman guitar player. I guess when he was in his teens, there was like some sort of affliction or accident that he was in or something like that where he had to wear a cast for quite a long time that was uh, kind of like almost a full body cast and it prevented any sort of like head movement and he actually was playing guitar pretty much in a stationary position the entire time 
So he just kind of developed a really good muscle memory as a result of doing that. You know, look to these guys for inspiration. There is a precedent. You can continue to kick ass on this instrument, and I hope you do so, sir. Uh, keep plugging away at it. Keep killing it. Don't let this get you down even for a second. Do you think Aristides should move manufacturing overseas so we can get an Arium guitar at a realistic price point? $1,500 to $2,000. So I gave your question a lot of thought, man, and truthfully, 100% no. I do not want them to move production overseas. Now, it's not my company, it's Pascal's company, so of course, you know, take it for what it is. This is just the bullshit opinion of a YouTuber. But dude, like, I definitely consider the four, $4,500 range of these like super, customized ones to be a realistic price point considering what you get. I love these guitars, I love their resonance, I love the attention to detail that goes into these things. Having visited the old factory and seen the process, seen what goes into these instruments, I know that a lot of people would balk at that price point, but it's there for a reason. You're getting what you pay for and my advice, honestly, if you're looking to get an Aristides but don't have that kind of money, you can save, even if it's for a long time, work out a payment option with Pascal or whoever you're dealing with, and also look into a used market because for whatever reason, a lot of Aristides models have been coming up used on eBay and Reverb and whatnot, and it's definitely well worth it to look into and check them out. I personally don't want the company's vision and commitment to consistency and customer service to falter and I don't want their reputation to suffer as a result of them potentially moving production overseas not that I've heard of anything like that happening you know I, I just think they just need to continue to kick ass keep the wait times as low as they can which is what they're doing keep churning out these incredible quality instruments and it's not unobtainium we just need to actually save our pennies and we need to afford them if this is what we want in our lives i would gladly pay that all over again to get this thing hey man i'm 18 and planning on becoming a luthier as a career what sort of things do guitarists such as yourself look for what should I be doing to slam my products home? I know what I look for, but I always want outside opinions. What I would focus on is being an awesome luthier before you consider how original your design is. Take lessons, take courses, like go to an actual school for luthiery. Whatever you do, don't just say, you know what, I'm just going to learn guitar from YouTube University and consider that to be something that will be sufficient. Because what's going to happen in that instance is that you're going to find that there's a lot of shortcomings with the teaching from not being able to have hands-on experience and having a teacher over you going, well, why don't you try this instead? You might have better results from that. Someone critiquing your work as you're doing it. Someone critiquing your design choices, your uh, attention to detail that you have someone who's going to whip you into shape so to speak because let me tell you that is what is going to make more of a difference in your instrument regardless of what price point it is that's the reason why a lot of guys out there charge uh, X amount of dollars like super expensive instruments like the Framuses of the world, the Mayonnaise Custom Shops, the Aristides where it's like four or five thousand dollars but you get a four or five thousand dollar instrument whereas opposed to a bunch of other luthiers out there that maybe charge X amount of dollars and don't exactly deliver a product that meets that sort of price requirement. Learn from the best, take heed of what they teach you Take heed of the feedback that they give you, but above all, focus on being good at what you do before anything else, before marketing, before originality, anything. How come you stopped doing your album of the week videos? I always looked forward to what you chose and recommended. Short answer is because I was 
putting so much effort into those videos to ultimately get a few hundred people to watch them. It wasn't worth the payoff that I was getting as a result of putting in my time and effort into those videos. Um, the long answer, the reason why I actually stopped was because around like the end of 2019, beginning of 2020, during the end of the holiday season, there's always a lull where there's not really a whole lot of new releases coming out. And in this particular case, from December of 19 to January of 20, there was kind of a lengthy stretch where there was hardly anything coming out, and the stuff that was coming out wasn't really all that good to me. So I didn't feel like doing a video where I just picked out the best of the worst for you. Um, I felt like there was definitely a video or two of that series that I did last year where I felt like that was what I ended up doing and I didn't want to go down that same road again. Um, I didn't feel like you guys deserve that. But then it just kind of became something where once some awesome releases did start to come out, yeah, I just wasn't motivated. I wasn't motivated to put in that kind of effort into creating that video and not really having a whole lot to show for it. It's not to say that I won't consider doing it again, but that is to say that it's not in the cards right now. Arnold, what is your favorite beer? So at the moment, there's three beers that are kind of vying for the top spot with me. Um, two of them are actually from the same brewery. And those two kind of come up all the time for sale on Tavor, that app that I like using to get my rare beer sent to me. Um, I'll leave a link in the description below. But I absolutely love Abominable, which has since been renamed Bee Bomb from Fremont Brewing in Seattle, Washington. Dark Star, which is a bourbon barrel aged imperial oatmeal stout also from Fremont Brewing out of Seattle, Washington. Those two beers, I love how boozy they are. I love how complex the flavors are. I love the different vintages and how they all taste a little bit different. But probably my number one, ever since the first moment that I tried one, is Sammy Klaus from Schloss Eggenberg. This is uh, a limited release one too, a limited edition that was uh, released in 2014. It's an extremely high alcohol by volume malt beverage. I want to say that this is classified as a Doppelbock if I remember right, but to me it does not taste anything like a Doppelbock. It tastes like the sweetest uh, American style barley one you've ever had. It is so good. It tastes like candy and it will really, really fuck you up because of the high ABV. But God damn, is this good. This one is a 2014 vintage and I'm saving this for uh, a special occasion. Hopefully that's coming soon. What guitar do you regret selling, getting rid of? So I've had a lot of different instruments that I've regretted um, uh, selling. I really regretted selling my RSDs 070 because even though I put the money towards getting my 080S because I just wanted to switch my RSDs from a 7 to an 8, I kind of still miss that instrument. Probably the number one that I miss though is way back in the day, 20 years ago, um, I had a Jackson made in the USA Kelly that was this kind of awesome Ferrari red with black bevels. It looks kind of like this one, except that mine was not a Marty Friedman signature. Mine only had 22 frets, but otherwise it's the exact same guitar that you're looking at right there. Um, had some sort of Seymour Duncan in the bridge. I don't remember which one. Had that Kaler bridge, had the single volume, and that was it. Um, it had a lot of damage on one of the lower points but god damn, that was a nice guitar. But I got rid of it because at the time it wasn't very inspiring to me. Knowing what I know now about guitar maintenance, I could probably get that thing back into a great shape and what I can't do to it, I could have taken it to Dr. John just down the road and he would fix it up for me, no problem. But, you know, needless to say, that guitar has been gone for well over a decade and a half now. I do kind of miss it and I wish I would have kept it. What was your first guitar and did you feel about it? 
Also, can you please do a review of the LTD EX200? It's my first guitar. Dude, that's a cool first guitar. That's a cool choice for your first instrument. My first guitar was something that my dad bought for me at Bobby's on Broadway Pawn Shop in Rockford, Illinois. He bought an Aria Pro XR series that was the XR ST3. Humbucker and two single coils had uh, like a two point style trim bridge in it. Mine was like this one, only it had the metallic blue finish of this one. It was a pretty decent instrument. It had some shortcomings. I kind of gained an opinion on first guitars. I definitely encourage people that want to learn to get something used because if there's like any sort of like shortcoming that that instrument has, a lot of times you can learn to like play around it and just kind of play for the sake of playing because you're happy that you own an instrument. And that guitar definitely had a few issues on it. We tried to fix some of those issues, sometimes to uh, a successful degree, sometimes not. Ultimately, I sold that instrument to get something else instead. Every so often I catch myself looking at eBay and Reverb to see if it pops up, but I've never found it. Um, but yeah, that was my first instrument and Aria Pro 2. And now it's time for this week's Troll of the Week. And this week's Troll of the Week is Ray Garcia. And he writes, You talk too fucking much and you're not saying a fucking thing. You fat bastard. Go wash dishes and make yourself a ham sandwich. Okay. So I'm back from washing the dishes, and I just wanted to let you know, thank you, that was a really uh, cathartic experience to just kind of lose myself in the moment of doing that daily chore. Okay, but anyways, so to answer the other part of your question though, um, let's see, I talk too fucking much, I'm not saying anything. I've got good news for you though, that's the beautiful part of YouTube. You don't have to watch me. You can watch anything else, so feel free to browse around, see if you can find something else that tickles your fancy. But I guess this is goodbye. So that's it for me. Leave your comment in the comment section below. Like this video, subscribe to this channel. There's lots more metal-oriented guitar content to come.